What's up guys, my name is Paul. I'm here today to talk about some of the controversial Elantra and Octane learning stuff. I've got some clips as well as some data to check out. So uh, let's get right into it. All right guys, we're gonna go over the test procedure here real quick. The goal here is to eliminate as many factors as possible. So our test is as valid as can be. So because there's some controversy over how accurate the data is on the instrument cluster, um, I'll primarily be using the Draggy GPS device, as well as looking at data recorded from an OBD2 scanner. So for the zero to 60 testing, I'm gonna do six total pulls. I'm gonna do three before getting gas, and then three after. With the way the launch control works, I'll have to do a few minutes of normal driving in between each pull. Similar thing with the quarter mile testing, I'll be doing four total runs, um, two before and two after refueling. And again, normal driving in between each pull to help keep the engine intake and tire temperatures all roughly the same. So with testing zero to 60 and quarter mile, there's a lot of opportunity for uh, things to impact the results. Um, obviously launching can be inconsistent, shifting can be inconsistent. So I think the, the bulk of the testing is gonna be this 40 to 80 mile an hour testing. I'm gonna do 15 total pulls, um, 40 to 80, locked into third gear. I got a bunch of different tests I'm doing here, so we can look at the results of those after. But essentially, I'm gonna be setting the car to third gear manually. Uh, I'm gonna start at around 30 miles an hour gonna go full throttle all the way until about 85 miles an hour. Draggy will only record 40 to 80 and we'll be logging OBD2 data as well. All right, so starting off with zero to 60s, um, as you can see here, we did six zero to 60 launches. So you can see here for the first run uh, with the Octane Learning, the distance was an average of 242 feet in 5.2 seconds. And then after getting gas, it went to 262 feet in 5.5 seconds. So about 20 additional feet and about a third of a second of additional time required. I didn't throw a clip together of the quarter miles because it's not that interesting, but here's the data. So before getting gas, did a 13.49 second run, 106.6 miles an hour. Then after getting gas, it was a 13.93 second run at 102.3 miles per hour. Um, out of the two runs, um, you can see the best results over here. 13.47 uh, versus a 13.92 and 106.6 miles an hour versus 102.3 miles an hour. Now, like I said, there's some inconsistencies with launching. So the zero to 60 and quarter mile runs are going to be a little less accurate just because of the you know, launching and shifting and everything. So. Went ahead and did 15 runs for the 40 to 80 pulls. This is third gear pull only. Now I didn't take the time to time all those up for that video, but I do have all this stuff logged here in this Excel file. So for our first run, you can see we've got our averages, um, our three pulls, and then our best results. Um, this is draggy data on top and then OBD2 data on the bottom and I cropped out some of the relevant stuff here. So you can see for the first run, we did a 5.4 seconds, 484 feet. And I know boost pressure isn't completely relevant for this kind of testing, but uh, we are showing it here just because it is a hot topic. We've got 18.27 peak PSI and an average peak of 18. For our second run, you can see that after getting gas, the 40 to 80 went from 5.4 seconds to just over six seconds. Uh, the distance also increased from 484 feet to 541 feet. Peak boost pressure was 15.37 and an average peak of 15.23. I did some back roads driving just to see if the Octane Learning would kick in from cruising around on the back roads. The test results are roughly the same as they were before. Then I went and I did the highway driving. This should activate the Octane Learning from my experience. You can see here, we went from a six second 40 to 80 to a 5.4 second 40 to 80. The distance also decreased from 538 down to 485. We can also see that the peak boost went from 15.5 to 18.5. After that testing, I went ahead and topped off the tank one final time and did some additional runs. Um, our times went from 5.42 to 6.21, and the distance went from 485 feet to 555 feet. Peak boost went from 18.5 down to 15.3. So I also have a clip with uh, two of my Octane Learned runs here on the left and two after refueling runs here on the right. Because we're not paying too much attention to the gauge cluster, this is more just for entertainment. So 
So I edited together a couple photos here. I wanted to take a look at a couple things. So this is what things looked like at around 3750 RPM. You can see on the left, our turbo's reading at around 18 to 19 PSI, and we're seeing 300 pound-feet of torque. Now over here on the right, these two runs, you're seeing 15 PSI for the turbo and 270 pound-feet of torque. Now I crop things together so they're all at 4500 RPM. You can see that we're at 17 and 18 on the left, 290 and 290 on the left, 15 and 15 on the right, 260 and 260 on the right. I also went ahead and cropped one together where they're all at 5,500 RPM. We can see 17, 17 on the left here, 270 and 270, 15 and 15 on the right, 240 and 240. And finally, I did one at just over 6,200 RPM. We can see 15 and 16 PSI on the left, 230, 230, 15 PSI, 15 PSI here on the right, 220, 220. So obviously at the higher RPMs, things are becoming a little more similar. So I compiled a lot of the data and I threw it in this data zap so we can look at things here on the graph. So first I started by pulling up boost pressure on the non-octane learning runs. We can see that they're all very similar here. They follow very close to one another. Now let's see what happens when we add in the octane learn runs. So look at this, octane learn runs here on the top, non-octane learn runs here on the bottom. So I have engine RPM thrown in here. At 3500 RPM, you can see there's around a three PSI difference between the two groups. As the RPM increases, this difference becomes less and less. So looking at the quarter mile data here, if you're looking at the fastest time for each group, there's about a 0.45 second difference between the two. I thought it'd be cool to throw together a little clip to show what that difference actually looks like. So as you can see by taking a look at those clips, it doesn't seem like a big difference, but when you see it in person, it's kind of a big difference. So what's the conclusion of all this? Well, the zero to 60 results are in, and it looks like the non-octane learned runs took an additional 19 and a half feet, which is over one car length, and an additional 0.31 seconds. For the quarter mile, the non-octane learning runs took an additional 0.44 seconds, and they were 4.29 miles per hour slower. On average, the 40 to 80 mile per hour runs without the octane learning took an additional 60 feet, which is almost four car lengths. Also took an additional 0.68 seconds, and on average showed three PSI less of peak boost pressure. So based on my testing, I think there is a measurable loss in performance from refueling. From what we've seen here, this loss performance can be regained though by driving on the highway for around 15 miles. Now I suspect this only exists for the DCT model as I've seen a lot of really good testing for the manual transmission and it doesn't appear to show the same characteristics. Let me know what you guys think, leave a comment down below.